Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, and welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective digital transformation using people, process, and technology. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the benefits of a multi-hybrid cloud. So I'm sure you've all heard the term private cloud and public cloud and maybe heard the term multi-cloud or maybe hybrid cloud. Today, we're going to um, discuss the benefits of these different types of clouds and specifically what we call the multi-hybrid cloud, which means running across multiple types of clouds, whether it's multiple public clouds or multiple public uh, private clouds and the benefits to doing that. But let's first take a look at looking at benefits of private cloud. So when I talk about private cloud, some of the benefits that always pop to the top are security, efficiency, and something I call predictive performance, which I'll talk about later. And then on the public cloud, you tend to look at things like scalability, elasticity, agility, and you're shifting some of your cost from CapEx, where you don't have to buy infrastructure, into OpEx, where you can now expense it a different way because you're only using what you're only paying for what you use. So there's benefits to both sides. So if we combine the two together and we come up with an architecture that supports both public and private cloud, then I can take advantage of some of the benefits of both. So that's what we're going to look at today. So let's take a look at uh, the multi hybrid cloud. So if I look at multi-hybrid cloud, the benefits that really perk up really great are agility, flexibility, predictive performance, security, and efficiency. So we'll go through each one of these. These are great uh, ways to um, tell your management when you're looking for funding for a multi-hybrid cloud. You can say, here are the benefits, and you can even put some, some cost savings behind each one of these or cost deferment behind each one. So let's first start with agility. Now, agility means the ability to move quickly, to move fast, and to adapt to any changes that are happening with new technologies that are out there, new applications that are being deployed, or even new threats like security or even competition threats. And the cool thing about um, a multi-hybrid cloud is the ability to move things very quickly between um, a public cloud, maybe the price in a public cloud is cheaper today than it was a month ago. So I want to be able to move some of my workloads from one public cloud to another public cloud or from my private cloud into the public cloud. All those, all those are different options. Or maybe there's a new service that's available that um, I want to spin up very quickly um, and I'm willing to pay a little bit more for that and it's in a public cloud. Um, so I could easily turn that on, use it, and then evaluate um, if I want to do that in my own uh, private cloud later on. So that gives you that agility that you need to move quickly uh, as, as things are changing. And we know in a highly competitive environment, agility is, is very important so that you can react to the things that are out there that are causing um, competition in, in your product line. The next one is flexibility. <clears throat> now, this is a little bit different than agility, right? Agility is the ability to move quickly. Flexibility is the ability to change, right? So having that ability to deploy an application anywhere across a cloud infrastructure, whether private or public, or across legacy. Now, agility and flexibility kind of go hand in hand. I can move very quickly, but not be very flexible. I can go over there to this new service in a public cloud, but I could never get back. That's not the flexibility that you, you want. The, you want flexibility as well. So a multi-hybrid cloud gives you that flexibility that you want, right? It gives you that ability to redirect workloads based off of other business factors, whether it's cost, security or reliability great example of this was netflix netflix years ago um were a one cloud vendor or one they went to one cloud uh, they they decided 
we're going to only go with one public cloud. That public cloud had a down time where they had some thing, uh, their infrastructure was down and Netflix suffered. They could no longer stream their videos in a certain part of the United States. Major, major problem, right? With flexibility built into their system after that happened, they built in a multi-cloud solution. Um, so now if something does go down with one of the cloud service providers, they can quickly migrate to another one. And by coming up with that multi-hybrid cloud uh, architecture, they were able now to move where it makes most sense um, at that day for cost or security or even reliability if one of the pub public um, cloud service providers is having an issue that day. You also need the ability to support multiple environments. Environments meaning development, test, production, right? So when I deploy applications or deploy services as a developer, I don't really care which cloud they end up on. Having that abstraction layer there, that orchestrator making those decisions for you, where is it going to land is extremely important. And that's where your flexibility comes in. So let's take a look at the next one. And this one is great. It's called predictive performance. Now, not every workload that you run in your cloud do you need high predictive performance. And also, another name for this would be like quality of service, meaning if I run this workload, I'm guaranteed it's going to finish in a half hour or in 30 milliseconds, whatever your, your quality of service is. Not all of them have to be um, tolerances very tight, like 1% or one-tenth of a percent. Some of them, you say, as long as it gets done in the next eight hours, and I know it only normally takes about 30 minutes, then it's kind of sloppy. Well, predictive performance is a big issue in the public cloud, and you can pay more to have a smaller QoS quality of service percentage, right? Or if you run it in your private cloud, you can have, you have a lot more control over it. The best way to explain this is the difference of living in an apartment building where you've got a noisy neighbor. And noisy neighbor is a, is a term that we're seeing um, more and more in the IT world, where I've got an application that's making a lot of noise. It's using network bandwidth, it's using uh, disk IO, or it could just be you know chewing up a bunch of CPU cycles. In an apartment building, I could have my guy above me, you know, having parties till two or three in the morning. Now, what recourse do I have? The only thing I can do is pound on the ceiling. That doesn't help typically, or I can go to the super. So I ask the super to help me out. They send a letter and say, hey, you got to knock that off. Guess what? That's how public clouds operate today. Eventually, if that guy keeps having parties upstairs, I'll kick him out, but it will take time. So your quality of service could suffer during that time. In a private cloud, because you own the infrastructure and you know everyone that's there, it's like having a house full of kids. Now, I have 10 kids, so I kind of know what that's like. The house can get really noisy, right? But if I have one of my kids that's just being extraordinarily noisy, causing havoc with the other kids, I can go and now restrict them pull back resources that they would normally want. Maybe it's taking away screen time or they get grounded or whatever it is. In a private cloud, you can do the same thing. You can decide based off of business priorities who's going to get the most resources. So I can keep that quality of service up for everyone. And I don't have someone just hogging all the resources. I can quickly shut them down. So the multi-hybrid cloud allows you like I mentioned before, flexibility. It allows you the flexibility to drop your workloads on the private or the public cloud, depending on your quality of service that you need. So this predictive performance plays a key role in the, in the multi-hybrid cloud. Now let's talk about security and compliance. Now there are some dangers with um, doing things in an automated way in the public cloud and in the private cloud. But if you Put some thought into it first and you build security in, 
then now the automation that you get with a multi-hybrid cloud means I can impose a security profile across all my cloud assets, whether they're private cloud or common or a public cloud, right? So this gives me that ability to say, I have a common security portfolio or profile that I'm applying everywhere. And now I can now deploy applications based off of those profiles. So if it is a private cloud and I have a very specific type of security, maybe it's uh, securing things with a um, TPM, a trusted programmable module where I, I know I'm going to tie a certain application to a cer certain machine, that would only run in your private cloud. With the multi-hybrid cloud, I could easily put that as a requirement and then it gets provisioned or deployed onto the private cloud side instead of the public cloud side. So there's a lot of really great benefits to a multi-hybrid cloud strategy and um, uh, technology architecture when I'm talking about applying security and compliance across all my assets. The next one is efficiency. Now, this is a real big battle and I've seen a lot of total cost of ownership, TCO, calculators that have been generated out there around efficiency. And it depends on which website you go to. If you go to one of the OEMs like HPE or Dell, they have a TCO calculator, total cost of ownership calculator that shows that private cloud is cheaper. If you go to AWS and Amazon Web Services and run their TCO calculator, they're going to show that they're cheaper. If you go to Google, they'll say the same. If you go to Microsoft Azure, they're going to say the same. What I have found is that with a multi-hybrid cloud solution and an intelligent orchestrator, I can get telemetry off of my private and my public clouds, which contain cost information, utilization numbers, all that stuff. And I can feed that back into my orchestrator. So now my orchestrator can make decisions on where workloads should land right now and for the next month or right now until the end of the day. So this gives you the benefit of, of optimizing where your workloads land. Now, another benefit as well is not all applications need to run 24 seven. I know we think they do and we program things so that they are running 24 seven all the time. But with this new model, um, in the multi-hybrid cloud, as well as in just public cloud and private cloud in general, I should be able to spin up applications when they're needed and tear them down when they're not. Um, a great example of this is something that um, we did up in the Canadian government. Instead of running 24-7, they run in 18-5, meaning their application, this one application specifically, ran 18 hours, five days a week. And all that other time, they actually turned it off. And people didn't use it during that time, so no one missed it. But they saved on all the costs, all the consumption costs that you get in the public cloud. Right? This was a huge benefit because when they started running before, they found that their public cloud was more expensive than their private cloud. Because they were running this application even though people weren't using it. Um, making sure that you have, with the multi-hybrid cloud, visibility into all your resources, how they're being used. Do you have zombie applications out there, zombie uh, services out there that are just chewing up money doing nothing? You should know about those things so that you can pull them off, get rid of them, end of life those applications and workloads because they are actually costing you real dollars. So these five benefits really help you with this multi-hybrid cloud, really help you articulate to your management the benefit of having this multi-hybrid cloud strategy and solution. Even, and some people say, well, we've been mandated to not go to the public cloud at all. We're doing everything the way we used to. Even if you put a multi-hybrid cloud solution on top of your legacy applications and infrastructure, it will give you visibility into what's going on. You can play around with your security because now you have a common security plane. 
you can look at efficiency, flexibility, and agility all have a role, whether you're in one of these domains, like legacy applications and infrastructure, or in two or all three, private cloud, public cloud, and. Now here's a picture of, here's a picture in your head of what it means to have a multi-hybrid cloud. It means that my development teams, when they drop applications into the multi-hybrid cloud, they don't really know where it's running. Is it running in the private cloud? Is it running in the public cloud? Is part of it running in legacy? Application developers really don't want to know how to do that stuff. They want something underneath the covers that handle that. Now, IT, they don't want to hand do anything. And they, they kind of get tired of developers just messing up their infrastructure. So they need an automated way to manage what's going on in their infrastructure, both in their legacy, in their private cloud, and in their public cloud as well. So they want, and they're going to focus on optimizing, protecting uh, their infrastructure and reliability of their infrastructure. So the tools that they need to look across public, private, and legacy are extremely important, and that's a benefit in the hybrid cloud. And then you've got security as well. We talked about the secure, the SecOps guys, right? Security operations. They're all about minimizing risk and protecting the um, um, IP of your organization. And a lot of times they get scared when data starts going outside of the data center walls because they put guards on the outside of the data center. There's special key locks and all that. And they feel that if it's in their data center, there's some protection. Well, that's far gone now. I mean, most of the data resides all over the place. So having a common way of them securing things across, not just physical, but logical across all the software ecosystem and in the cloud is extremely important as well. The multi-hybrid cloud strategy and architecture gives them that capability. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and embrace the digital revolution.